station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston station, uh, ready for the event. European Space Agency, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station. This is Isa Pio from ASI in Rome, uh, here at the ASI headquarters, waiting for you for the beginning of the event. Please check, voice check. ASI headquarters, this is Space Station, read you loud and clear. How me? Great to see you, Paolo. I leave the word now right away to Germana and Paolo D'Angelo, who will conduct the event here in ASI for you today. Hello, Paolo. It's a pleasure to see you. I'm Germana. It's a pleasure to find you in such good shape. We're here today at the uh, main uh, headquarters of Atico. And we here are at this uh, high school in Rome for uh, the surrounding area as well. And we're at the Silvestro di Vertici. Uh, we have done uh, a number of experiments that you know very well. And they have performed, all of the students have been following an education course that is very important. And we have uh, uh, learned our in-depth in uh, various problems having to do with space and that sector, and today for them, this is the culmination of all of the work they've done so far, is to be able to speak with you. And so we greet you uh, from our present, uh, the general uh, director, and from all of the members of the Italian Space Agency. And now you're compa the companion on, my companion on this adventure, Paolo Angelo, I'd like to present to you. Ciao, Paolo. Just a quick uh, set of greetings. I don't want to cut into the time for the students. And here's their first uh, question. I'm uh, Bernardo from Avogadro Institute. I'd like to know what is it that uh, uh, pushes you into uh, engaging in this work in the space station, which is also a very risky endeavor. Yes, I wanted to begin to greet uh, Germana and Paolo. It's a pleasure to hear you or from you. And uh, there is a fairly strong echo. If you could uh, cut the microphone off when you're not talking, that might be better. And uh, I was uh, saying uh, greetings to all of you. It's a pleasure to be with all of you here at the Space Station, the International Space Station of the Columbus Module in the International Space Station. This is a moment, an extremely important uh, moment for the station because it's important. Uh, all of the we're doing here in terms of science and technology, all the activity that we're engaged in, but also to speak with you and to bring you to space for a short uh, period of time is a very important uh, activity. And so I thank you for having come this morning, uh, today, to have listened what we're doing. Uh, thank you also for uh, giving your, us your attention and to, so that I can give you a certain uh, possibilities for, uh, for your future. And so returning to the question, who is it uh, that was, it was Bernardo? What is the reason that pushes an astronaut uh, to go on such uh, this type of uh, mission? Well, to tell the truth, it is my dream. It's uh, a dream that I've had since I was a child, a boy. I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to try to go outside of the world and to try these things, which is rather strange. On the one side, it's true. Uh, it's also rather close. But on the other hand, these are things that um, uh, bring so many important things that uh, are useful to all of us. And therefore, I would say that it is worth the effort. I would say it's worth the effort uh, to take this risk. Uh, for me, it's not a risk because these are all positive things. I'm, I'm Ilaria Ruffini from uh, the Technical Scientific School of Volterra. I'd like to know what happens in the case of an illness uh, of an astronaut 
or injury. Hilaria, we have an entire series of activities for emergency uh, uh, situations in case there are particularly important question, uh, problems that arise. You can see in back here, here's the emergency panel, and uh, one of these uh, lights uh, will light in the event of a, an emergency. There are sirens also that uh, one can hear. In the case of really major problems in terms of uh, medical uh, or physical uh, sense, we can, of course, uh, abandon the uh, space station. And this uh, uh, shuttle that we've come to uh, can actually, within a space of uh, just a few hours, can take us back to Earth. Hello. I am uh, from the Einstein. I wanted to ask you, can you tell us about uh, the scientific and um, technical aspects of your uh, mission uh, involving uh, the stress of uh, departure and takeoff? Yes, uh, the stress of uh, takeoff is fairly uh, uh, significant, not only in the physical sense, but also the separation from the family and various considerations that you uh, come to mind. But we overcome these by preparation through uh, the proper training, the right preparation, through mental uh, training as well, with the right team around you. And I have to tell you that when we leave on these missions, all of these things uh, have been taken into consideration. We have also then uh, been training in uh, environments that are rather hostile on Earth, in uh, caves or in mountains or particular situations, to uh, try to see how we would react under these conditions. And so you have to know yourself. Uh, it's very important to engage in sports, for example, to do all that you can do to be able to understand yourself in greater depth. Salve. I am Carmen from Benedicti. What, in your opinion, what is your opinion of the Fermi paradox? Carmen. Carmen. <laughs> the, the Fermi paradox is uh, analyzed in a few words, or if there were civilizations that were outside of Earth, why do not why do they not reveal themselves? Why haven't we heard them uh, up to now? It's a good question, an interesting question. I would have liked uh, to have been able to the dialogue, engage in dialogue with Fermi and Teller and all those who've asked these questions, which are still uh, asked today. So I'd like to know how it is that, uh, that human beings are curious to go out in search of these things, even those that are rather strange. With regard, I'm convinced that uh, in a certain part of the universe there are other forms of life. The problem is the enormous distances that uh, separate us, and therefore how to go out uh, and pick out a small grain of sand in a sea of sand. It's almost impossible. Salve. I am Francesco Danella from Giordano Bruno. Being in space must be an unimaginable and unique experience. How do you spend your days uh, during uh, the course of your space journey? Well, I would say that uh, certainly there is a change, the fact that uh, you can arrive up here and to see and make it seem that it is possible to realize your dreams, even a complicated and incredible dream, it is possible to make uh, the ability to do this changes your perspective and your way of seeing things. Also, the ability to be able to see Earth as a whole, it also changes your attitude uh, and your uh, perspective on the planet and what we are. And all of these things are important and fundamental uh, aspects and questions, I would say, that come into space changes you in a positive sense and uh, I'm happy that the future in the future it'll be ha possible for many more of us to uh, travel and make, have these experiences and I hope that you'll be able to as well I'm from the uh, Filippo Silvestri uh, Technical School. Your experience has taught us that during the uh, conduct of an experience, it is important to uh, repeat the same experiments many times because uh, error is always a possibility. Uh, you've done, we've done hundreds of experiments, and. Uh, 
What can you tell us about what you expect uh, after having uh, run the same experiment so many times? Well, to tell the truth is true. Uh, perhaps uh, this is one of the most important considerations in the space station. If I'm uh, asked if I'm afraid, how do I feel, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I always respond that the only fear that I have is that of uh, uh, committing errors in uh, conducting the uh, experiments and not paying attention to what I'm doing and destroying an experiment that would have cost hours of work and uh, efforts by so many people. Yes, we feel the responsibility, but I have to say that the training that we've had, the support from uh, control centers, is fundamental to our success. We engage in activities every day. Every day we work together in order to assure that what we do, we can do it without uh, problems, and also in the majority of times we succeed. And so uh, there's a responsibility, but it is a team effort, which is fundamental. And with this teamwork, we're able to really uh, go a great deal, uh, go a great distance. Hello. I am uh, Alessandro Di Jacopo of the Dileta uh, High School. How do you, within the space station, uh, account for the change in uh, time uh, zones? Well, we use the London GMT, or Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, it's rather a complicated thing because here, without outside references with the sun, since we're going around the Earth uh, in an hour and a half, that is, we have about 16 times a day. This makes things complicated. I have at least two watches, which I uh, wear with different hours. Uh, one of these uh, is on a 24-hour basis. It's interesting. Uh, time management is a very interesting uh, aspect, and how it is. But we use GMT in an attempt to use uh, to establish a point of reference. Salve, sono Davide Salve. Marchetti del Liceo Giordano Bruno. I am uh, Davide Marchetti from uh, Giordano Bruno uh, uh, High School. What are the negative and positive aspects of life without uh, gravity? Davide, Davide uh, un saluto a te. Uh, greetings to you and all of those at Giordano Bruno. Working uh, without gravity brings you uh, into a completely different world. The normal, uh, normal rules do not apply, and there's no way to really train uh, for this world on the Earth. And so you have to become an extraterrestrial person to learn that there's no up or down. You learn that you can uh, calmly uh, work with your head uh, down and to work with any problems. It is a uh, situation that is really rather confusing. You have to uh, learn to work in this manner and to understand that if you are the one who defines your uh, environmental conditions, at first it's a little bit disconcerting, but then you become accustomed, and it's incredible how light and free you feel and this uh, is a testimony to the fact that we uh, find ourselves uh, quickly accustomed to the uh, conditions that uh, surround us without any problems. Hello, I'm Dimisa with 4th S, and I wanted to ask you, considering that... Uh, how do you... Um, Go to sleep, since the conditions on Earth uh, are different from space. That's true. 16 times, or rather six uh, uh, sunrises and sunsets uh, confuses us. And here we uh, have our daily planning uh, schedule, which we consult, which consists of all of our planning activities, which includes uh, within uh, uh, parentheses when we have to go to sleep, which is usually about 10 o'clock at night. Of course, everyone can do as he wishes. But nor normally between hour 10 o'clock and six in the morning is the period that I've dedicated to sleep. I have to say that we sleep very well here at the station, uh, floating a little bit like this, but you, you sleep very well. Hello. I am uh, Ludovico from the Fermi Institute. I'd like to know uh, about uh, how you see. I'd like to know uh, your uh, response to the uh, contributions made by the team in Italy. And also, 
I have to say that being up here gives us a vision of the world which is different and you lose the perception of what is done in every specified point of the earth. And the fact is that uh, here you have a, an absolutely global vision. Uh, your question is extremely important. Uh, it raises questions as to how we are as a civilization, where we're going. Of course, there are particular particularities and details that are extremely important relating to catastrophic events on the one hand and strong on the other hand, uh, which uh, shake us as human beings. You really get a perspective that is uh, different uh, concerning life. Uh, regarding your question about uh, human catastrophe on Earth. And uh, there is no precise response. We are all on this uh, ship uh, that travels the universe, uh, which of course is the year of the planet Earth, and we try to make it run uh, better, uh, searching always to uh, do it as well as we can and to be as uh, good as we can. Hello, I'm uh, from the Scientific uh, Institute of Alterra. How are your human relations uh, within the space station, I wanted to ask you. Well, it's true that we are in a uh, cohabitation situation, which is rather uh, pressurized. Uh, there are uh, six people within a closed space, but we're all professionals. We have an extremely important ex uh, objective uh, that is very important not only to our space agencies, but to humanity as a uh, whole. And so uh, we are all motivated to work as well as we can together by avoiding the small things that make uh, uh, complicate, complicate uh, life. Uh, what we normally do is that whenever something bothers us, uh, us so that we don't like or something that isn't working, we immediately bring it up. This is one of the things that we do here openly, so as to give the others the ability to understand that something is happening that is not uh, going well and gives us a chance to change it. For me, this is a very important thing. Hello, I am uh, Matteo from the Avogadro Scientific Institute. I'd like to ask you how it is that radiation and microgravity can uh, affect uh, the cells of the retina and how can uh, uh, your coenzymes uh, be affected uh, by your conditions. But yeah, that's a very important and specific question, a precise question, to which I'm not sure if I can respond a uh, adequately. Uh, I would like to uh, call uh, on experts from the Italian uh, Space Agency. I'm sure there are some that would uh, be able to give you a better uh, answer. But uh, in fact, the entire uh, body, including with the retina, is affected by these conditions, which is part of the studies. Uh, these damaging uh, effects are part of the studies that we are engaging in here in the space station. You can see behind me there's an echo or a, uh, and a machine for, uh, uh, for uh, producing uh, echo sonograms. Uh, we just uh, recently uh, did an experiment to see the condition of the eggs and whether it works or doesn't work. So in a personal sense, I don't know, but I know that they're doing a lot of research and trying to understand whether these substances are effective in preventing some of these uh, problems. And the results we shall see in the future. Hello. I'm Giuliano from the Filippo Silvestri Institute. When you're up there in the space station and you're looking at the Earth and all of its beauty, can you tell us that there is a means uh, that you can perceive from your vantage point as to how uh, conflict among men on Earth can be resolved? Ha. Well, that's a uh, philosophical question, which is very important. Well, uh, we as human beings have this planet, uh, which uh, is the only planet that we have for the time being. The Earth is uh, very powerful. We can do a lot to the Earth. Uh, nothing happens to it. But the problem is that if uh, environmental conditions change, those which enable us to live, we will uh, uh, disappear. And after a few million years, the Earth will return to the way it was. We have to pay attention to work together to maintain this uh, ship that is passing through the universe 
uh, in order to be able to manage it uh, more effectively and uh, do everything to prevent uh, what you suggested from happening. Hello, I am Ms. Larocco from the uh, Scientific Institute of Rome. I would like to ask you, based on your experience, whether it was easier to train yourself to go into space or to uh, come back to Earth and uh, read after uh, life on Earth. Which is more uh, difficult? My experience from the two previous missions tells me that I uh, adapt very easily to the uh, uh, absence of weight uh, in orbit, but on the other hand, I repay uh, that ease when I return to Earth. The, uh, when the uh, force of gravity grabs a hold of me again and squashes me, crushes me uh, toward the Earth. And I've got to tell you, the first days after my return to Earth were rather difficult, including the therapy and the uh, work that I do to uh, strengthen my exoskeletal and my eyes. This has been my experience uh, so far. Returning to Earth is harder than going into space. Hello, Paolo. I am from the Einstein Institute. I would like to tell you, uh, ask you, besides the uh, scientific aspects of the uh, mission, are there any other uh, fundamental factors that uh, induce you to leave? Yes, Laura. Certainly the uh, technological and scientific uh, uh, goals and work that we do is very important. But also for me, this is the culmination of a dream, to do what I want to do, to follow my passions. And it's also a pleasure, certainly, to speak with uh, you, all of you, to be able to transmit this idea of trying to uh, do things uh, that are, have been impossible. It's, uh, we're trying to, of course, explore <clears throat> everything that is around us and to do what uh, here the four has been considered almost impossible and to be able to bring this experience into everyone's home, into the schools. I am happy to do it, and I'll do it again as soon as I return to Worth in the future. Hello, I'm Emanuela from the Avogadro Scientific Institute. I'd like to know, well, uh, when you distinguish uh, your nighttime from Earth, what benefits uh, will that bring to research? in distinguishing nighttime from uh, daytime. It's a very specific uh, question regarding the scope of... Uh, this is a precursor mission for a mission that will follow later. We are trying to investigate to understand what happens uh, as a result of cosmic rays. We don't know where they come from, where they go. There are many questions to which we have not found uh, answers so far. The telescope uh, is going to be used to make a uh, mapping uh, of the sources of uh, lights on the Earth in order to be able to uh, ensure that when we measure the lights that come from uh, the outside, those that are generated by this uh, external radiation, we'll be able to know exactly whether it is something uh, from Earth or not. This seems a little bit complicated, a little bit bizarre, but it's something that's a very important uh, question because there's so many questions that still uh, exist that we have not as yet responded to, and this is going to be one of those that's going to be able to for, uh, bring forward our knowledge to advance our knowledge. Okay, Paolo, okay, Paolo thank you for having uh, given you uh, our time. Uh, it flew quickly by. I thank you again. It's always a pleasure to see you and to see you uh, in good condition. I thank you again for all of the work that you're doing in space for us, but uh, also for uh, humanity as a whole. I'd like to give you a few seconds uh, uh, to uh, give you a chance to uh, greet the uh, Again, I'll uh, pass along the greetings of the kids, the students here. Uh, thank you, Germana and Paolo. Uh, please uh, give me my best wishes to President uh, Battistone of the Italian Space en uh, Agency, and uh, also greetings to all of you uh, young folks who've been there at the Italian Space Center uh, Agency. Uh, ask yourselves the questions. Be wide awake to the possibilities that exist out there for you so that you can do what you want to do. We shall see again uh, in 20 years when I'll be sitting down in Europe Auditorium, auditorium of the Italian Space Agency, and you will be out in Mars, I don't know where, and I look forward to contacting you again. That's an appointment for us to uh, keep in 20 years. Bye now. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event.
Thank you to all participants from European Space Agency. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.